Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today, I wanna to show you how to steal the color grade from your favorite Hollywood films. So without further ado, open up Photoshop, open up Premiere or your editing software, and let's jump into it. So over in Photoshop, as you can see, we have got our screen grab from my footage. And also open in another tab, I've got a screen grab from the film The Martian. I love the colors in this. I think they absolutely nailed it. And it's just, it's dope. Honestly, I, I love it, it's great. So the very first thing we need to do is extract the colors from our Martian scene. Luckily, Photoshop gives us a super simple way to do this. It's, oh, it's honestly amazing and I love it so, so much. So what you're gonna wanna do is with this image selected, head up to File, hit Export and hit save for web. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, save for web might actually be somewhere in this list, but in all the newer Creative Cloud versions, it is in the export list. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit export, and hit save for web. What that's gonna do is bring up this dialog box. Now it looks super scary and it looks like there's a whole bunch of options, but luckily we're only gonna be playing with a few of them, so don't panic too much. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you have the optimized file format set to GIF, and also the color reduction algorithm needs to be set to custom. Now, if you look a bit further down, you'll see there is a color table, and this is basically a map that Photoshop can recognize of all 256 colors that make up this image. But we don't want 256. We want somewhere between three and five. I found three works best for most things. So all we need to do to get that is come up to where it says colors and change 256 to three. Now we wanna export this color table into a format that we can load into our swatches in Photoshop. So what we wanna do is come to the color palette menu, hit the little drop down, and just hit save color table. That is gonna give you the option to save it anywhere on your PC. So save it somewhere that you are gonna remember. I've made a movie color match file here, and I'm just gonna call this one The Martian. And you'll see it's saving as an Adobe color table file. So hit save, and we're done with this dialog box, so you can just hit cancel, close out of that. So the next thing we need to do is apply the gradient mask. Now, this is pretty easy to do. All you wanna do is come down to the adjustment layers icon down here, hit that and hit gradient map. So let me briefly explain what the gradient map does. If I click once to edit the gradient map, you can see we've got two handles. The first is a dark browny gray color and the far right is a pure white. If I go into the darker color and hit the color icon, I can change this to pretty much anything I want. So if I change it to a bright orange, you can see that all the dark areas of our image have been mapped to orange. Obviously, if I change this to blue, they change to blue. So the left handle controls the darkest areas. The white handle in this case, the right hand handle, controls the brightest areas of the image. So if I go ahead and change this to red, you can see all of our highlights have been set to red and all of our shadows have been set to blue. Now we can click anywhere on this line to add more handles and we can adjust the colors in the midtones. So say I set the midtones to green, we have a fairly hideous looking image and we can slide these around to get different variations of that image. But it definitely doesn't look good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reset it to black and white just for now and hit OK. Now we're gonna be applying the three colors that we pulled out into our color table to this gradient map. To do that, we obviously need the colors. Come down to the swatches panel and just pull that out and open it up. If you don't have the swatches panel, you can come up here to window and just click on swatches and it should load in. But with it open, you can see we've got the generic swatches that Photoshop gives us. But we don't want the generic ones. We would like to load in our Martian swatch and again, that's super easy to do. Just hit the little drop down and hit replace swatches. And that's gonna load up the dialog box. But as you can see, this is where I saved it, but it's not here. And that's because this is looking for .aco files. We didn't save it as a .aco file. We saved it as a .act. It's a color table. So click drop down, hit color table, and there we have the Martian. So I'm gonna go ahead and load these in and you can see we've got our three colors primed and Good to go. So I'm gonna just go ahead and double click on our gradient icon and load that back up. Now I'm gonna go ahead, click once to open our gradient map settings and I'm just gonna pick this leftmost handle, hit the color box and just pick one of these. So I'm gonna pick the first one here. Now the number you wanna pay attention to is this value here, which is the brightness value. So the brightness value for this color is 97%. So I'm gonna hit okay and on the location for this slider, I'm just gonna type in 97 and you can see it's pretty much beiged out our image, which is fine. We're gonna come back and fix that now. Um, but that's the position you wanna set it to. So I'm gonna hit the second handle and do the same thing again, hit the color box, 
pick the second color and the brightness value for this is 29%. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the location to 29. And then as I mentioned a moment ago, we need to add a third handle. So just click anywhere on the bottom here, hit the color box, pick your third color. And this one is 78%. So I'm gonna hit okay and set that one to 78%. Now you're probably thinking that's not even remotely close to the Martian. It's just a dirty orangey color and it doesn't look good. <laughs> so what we're going to want to do is change the blend mode of our gradient map layer to either soft light or color. Uh, soft light works best for more subtle effects, but in the instance of this Martian scene, I'm going to go ahead and pick color. Gives it a bit more of a, a dusty look. Um, and just makes it look a bit more interesting. And we are gonna make some more tweaks to this, but for now, I'm happy with the way that looks. The next thing we need to do is isolate the tones from the Martian scene. So that's the shadows, the mid-tones, and the highlights from this image. Now, it's super easy to do. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is hit the new layer icon and make sure you grab your brush tool. You can grab it from just here, or you can just hit B on your keyboard. And if you hold down I, it will give you the eyedropper tool and you wanna make sure this is set to three by three or five by five average and your sample should be set to all layers. And all we wanna do at this point is sample the brightest areas and the darkest areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this area here. I know it's not necessarily the absolute brightest area, that would kind of be this massive great ball of fire in the sky over here. Um, but I don't want to use the sky because it's not a true representation of what we've got going on in our image. Making sure I got my new layer selected, I'm just going to paint a little bit of that highlight color just over there. And next up is the darkest areas, which I would argue is down here. So I'm going to go ahead and paint in just a bit of that shadow color. Now for the mid-tones, it's a little bit more complicated. So all you want to do is come up to the select and hit color range. Mine's already set to mid-tones, but when you load it in, it's going to be set to sampled colors. So you're going to want to come to the drop down, hit mid-tones, and the fuzziness will be set at around 40. So you just want to drop that to zero, maybe expand the range just a little bit, and then hit OK. Come down and make sure you have your bottom layer selected, not the one with your brushes on, and hit Control J. That's going to copy the averaged area to a new layer, which we're then going to use the blur to get an average color from. So you can head up to filter with this layer selected, hit blur, and then hit average. And as you can see, that's averaged out all the colors that were originally in this mid-tone selection and given us this nice kind of murky brown color. So I'm gonna go ahead, pick that, and making sure I've got my brush layer selected, I'm just gonna add that as my mid-tone color between the other two. So to really, really nail this effect home, we're not quite there yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna map these highlights, shadows, and mid-tones to our image here. And it's super easy to do. We're gonna be using the curves adjustment layer. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead, select your gradient map, hit the adjustment layer icon, and pick curves. That's gonna load up this dialog box, and it's pretty straightforward. Curves gives you the option to set your black point, your white point, and your gray point, which is your neutral point. And we're gonna be using these to map these. It's literally that straightforward. Come back up, double click on this icon again, and we should be able to pick a highlight color. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. It's gonna ask us if we wanna save the new target colors as defaults. We don't, we only wanna use these once, so I'm gonna go ahead, hit No, and then proceed to select the brightest part of my image. Now, this might take a little bit of clicking around to find the brightest part that looks the best. Um, in my case, I think it's probably gonna be around over here somewhere to get the best kind of orange I'm, I'm happy with roughly about there. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the black point. I'm just gonna pick my darkest color here, and then I'm gonna pick the darkest point in the image, which is probably this area just in here roughly. There looks pretty good. And then lastly, we need to do the same thing with the grays. So I'm gonna go ahead, double click the icon, select our mid-tone kind of brown color, and then all I have to do is select something that in my original image would normally be gray. So I know that these pebbles here are gray, this pebble here is gray, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pick. The last thing I might do while I'm here is go ahead and just add a levels adjustment and maybe just bump the dark areas to make them a little bit darker um, and just give it a little bit more contrast. Something around there looks pretty good. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. 
All we need to do now is export it as a LUT. Now to export a LUT from Photoshop, super simple. I know I've said that a bunch of times, but Photoshop does make all of this stuff really, really easy. All you have to do is come up to file, hit export, and go down to color lookup tables, which is a LUT. Click on that and give it a name. So I'm just gonna name this one Martian, or I would if I could spell. Um, set, set your quality. I tend to stick with high. I've never had any problems with high. Then you wanna pick the formats that you're exporting in. Obviously I'm working with a cube file because I am working in Premiere. So I'm happy with all of this. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay. It's gonna ask me where I wanna save it and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name because the name doesn't transfer across for some reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that martian.lut, save it in my movie color match file, hit save let Photoshop kind of do its magic, and that's pretty much it. We have our LUT exported. All I want to do now is jump back over into Premiere and apply my LUT to this footage. So all I've got to do to do that is come to down to the Effects Browser and add a Lumetri Color panel. So we're just going to go ahead and add Lumetri Color. And then in the Creative tab, you can hit Look, hit Custom, and then we've got our Martian.Cube hit open and give it a couple of seconds and there you have it. You go from having what looks like clay or silt, I don't really know what that material is, on a beach to having a very, very Martian looking landscape that roughly matches our original scene from the film. Obviously this was shot and has a Matt Damon in it and this just doesn't, but you get the idea. It's, it's, it's pretty accurate. From here, you can go and adjust the intensity, obviously if you don't want it to look very Martian-y at all. And then I would probably just dial in a little bit more in the shadows and maybe a little bit more in the highlights and the mid-tones if I was going for kind of a more dramatic effect. And there you go. You have gone from having a kind of beach scene, I call it a beach scene, it's not a very nice beach scene, but kind of just a rocky, normal looking scene to having something that looks like it was shot on Mars. All right, guys, that is pretty much it from me. I really hope you guys like the tutorial. It's a super, super handy trick. And when you're not listening to me try and ramble and explain it, it is much, much quicker once you know what you're doing. Go ahead, have fun with it. As I say, my one tip would be try and match your scene that you're trying to grade as closely to the scene from the movie as you can, because the colors are just gonna be much, much more accurate. If you have skin tones in that scene, make sure you always sample the skin tones as your highlights, because that's gonna give you the most accurate representation of color when you kind of transfer that across to your own footage where you again have skin tones. But I'm gonna wrap things up here, guys. If you like the video, please go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave me some comments. Let me know what some of your favorite color grades are in movies. Like I know a lot of people are into Skyfall. I love that, it looks dope. But let me know some of your favorites down in the comments. Take it easy, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.